Hey art nerds, today we've got another edegame watercolor tutorial. I'm working with a different edegame paper this time. This is one I picked up when I was in Japan. And this is the reference image that I'm going to be using. It's one of the, it's a photo of one of the pansies at Cheekwood Botanical Garden before they had to shut down due to COVID self-isolation concern. So these are the materials that I'm going to use for this tutorial. We have the Mozart Komorebi set. We have our pack of edigame paper and I actually don't know what the working properties of this paper are at the start of this tutorial because I'd never used it before. We have some Sumie brushes. We have some Pentel pigment inking brushes. We have white gouache, white uh, washi tape or masking tape and we also have a pad of Canton XL watercolor paper. We're not going to be using the paper inside though. We're going to be using the chipboard back as a structural support for our edigame painting. So I'm in Louisiana while I'm recording this, kind of self-quarantining with my birth family during uh, the COVID pandemic. And this has been a great way to kind of de-stress, detach, and to use my time productively and in a relaxing manner. Fortunately, the materials for edigame are fairly simple. If you're at home in your own home studio or you have an art supply hoard that you've been meaning to use, you'll probably have the majority of these materials. The only thing that might be a little difficult to find is edigame postcards. What you can do instead is just use regular watercolor paper and cut it down to size. Edigame has, um, or edigame postcards are usually made with washi attached to some sort of postcard for support, and it has different handling properties than Western watercolor paper. If you have rice paper, that's going to behave very similarly to this, and you may want to just use a bit of book glue to attach your finished painting to the back of like an index card. So I'm tearing some strips of washi tape. This is going to be our structural support. I'm going to put them on my wrist to remove some of the tackiness. So you can see that here. Fold them over and then just tape them to the chipboard. Once my postcard has been secured, I'm going to begin sketching. I'm just using a mechanical pencil here. Some edigame artists begin by painting freehand. They don't even sketch, but I like sketching it in first. And it's a really, really light, rough sketch since edigame is kind of a looser art form. So I'm drawing the pansy. So what I did is I sketched a circle first, and then I'm breaking it down into the individual shapes. Most flowers have very similar sort of shapes. Pansies are a bit unusual, but if you draw a lot of violets, it's very similar to that. They have five petals with the top two overlapping to varying degrees. It really depends on what species of pansy you're drawing. Since I'm working really closely with my reference image, it's actually up on my laptop just off screen. All I have to do is reference the photo that I took rather than try to come up with it from imagination. So you guys can see the sketch is really, really super loose. Edigame is a great art form for people who are not really secure in their art or they want to do something that doesn't really stress them out, something that's a little bit easier and a little bit looser. I've mentioned in some of my other edigame tutorials that we're going to be working with the paint much more thickly than we would with western style watercolors. So I'm going to start by painting in our background. You guys will notice that on the edigame postcard we're getting a lot more spreading and bleeding than we would on western style watercolor paper. This is an inherent trait of this type of paper. This is something you actually want to happen. It's made to do this. I know some are artists um, unfamiliar with edigame, they try this and they are freaked out. They really aren't expecting this and then they think the paper was defective. But this is actually something you're going to want. And another thing that's really, really cool about this paper is you get these really, really beautiful diffused wet into wet blends. Now, you're really not supposed to be working 
too wet with this paper. Layering does not work the same way it does on Western style watercolor paper. And you're gonna be, wanna be more deliberate about your application of layers, how you adjust your colors and whether or not you, so generally you really wanna work just increasingly thicker, increasingly thick applications of paint with this sort of paper. That's gonna give you the best result. You don't wanna do glazes once you've applied your paint. And Edagame works really well with Gensai style watercolors. So for those of you ha who have a Kuratake Gensai Tombi set lying around because everybody was swearing that it was the best thing in the world three years ago, this is a great chance to break it out. Edagame and Gen well, Gensai paints use a binder called Nikuma which is an animal hide glue, whereas Western style watercolors typically use gum arabic, they may use honey, they might use aquazole, and some use dextrin. So it's a very different type of binder, and it's designed for very thick applications of paint, almost like gouache. So if you have Chinese watercolors, those utilize a similar binder, and they might work really well for this technique. So I've got the background blocked in. It had a chance to dry, but it wasn't fully dry. It was a particularly humid evening here in Louisiana. Um, I decided to fill in the centers of our pansy using a warm yellow. And then I'm going in with a red violet. And you guys can really see how much wet into wet blending this paper is capable of. Now I'm going in with a much cooler purple and just adding hints of it around the petals of the pansy while it's still wet. So here are our basic colors blocked in. I'm gonna allow it a chance to dry before I add further layers. Now that that's had a chance to dry, it's not fully dry, but it's much less wet. The background is closer to fully dry. I'm applying a much cooler red violet to the center of the pansy and allowing it to blend out into our warm yellow. I'm also applying more of the purple around the perimeter of the petals. While that dries, I'm gonna use some negative painting techniques to help define some of the leaves in the background. So I'm kind of sketching it in using this large sumi brush and then filling it in. You wanna be really careful as you're doing this, especially if you're not used to handling larger brushes. One of the lovely things about edagame is we're really not aiming for perfection, we're aiming for impression. I'm adding in some cool blue, it's almost like a Prussian blue, I think Mozart calls it like azure blue, but I'm not adding it just everywhere, I'm just adding it in spots to help create some darker areas.
And that's our blocked in background. Another great thing about Edagame is you're going to probably ink on top of it and that's going to really pull your watercolors together. So don't worry about painting really detailed or painting really tight. So now that our flower has had a chance to dry, I'm going in with a little bit of gamboge yellow. I've added it to the center of the pansy and I'm also adding it to some of the petals. I'm also adding in some details and to achieve this sort of detail, you really want to work with a really thick concentration of whatever color you want to apply. So edigame, you really want to have a larger selection of colors. That's why manufacturers of edigame watercolors, they make like 48 pan sets because you really don't want to do too much color mixing and you really don't want to add too much water in order to achieve our lighter colors in our pastels. Pastels are usually pre-mixed with edigame watercolor. Now I'm going in with a really thick mix of that dark purple and adding just some striations to the center of the flower. This has had a chance to dry almost completely. I'm also using this as an opportunity to add more details to the background, blocking in more leaf shapes that I'm going to uh, reserve as negative painting leaves and filling the rest in with the darker color, so probably azure blue. And for so many people, this is a really, really stressful time. I'm recording this in March. I'm separated from my fiance. He's in Nashville. I went to Louisiana to be with my family during um, a scheduled family surgery. And I just kind of got stuck here because they are increasing self-isolation, increasing lockdowns and increasing quarantine. So this is a really stressful time, but it's really nice that I have the option to go out into my mom's flower bed and gather photo reference of beautiful flowers and then spend my evenings calming down and painting. It allows me to sort of center myself and it's also just kind of a way to like hyper focus on just one thing without being constantly on the internet or constantly watching the news. So if you can, I highly recommend you use this as a chance to invest in yourself and pick up some art skills you've always wanted to learn. I'm using a much smaller Menso brush to add some of the finer details in white gouache.
Once that dried, I'm going to ink some of the outlines. This is where we really get a chance to pull our watercolor painting together and to make it make sense. I'm inking some of my outlines using a Pentel pigment brush pen. This is the extra fine brush tip and it handles a lot like a brush. It's got a lot of flexibility. You can get some really beautiful dry brush out of it and it can get some really nice nuanced lines. It's also really important to remember that a lot of artists right now are currently unemployed and have unstable, insecure futures ahead of them, myself included. I earn extra income. I earn income by teaching in-person classes, and for the foreseeable future, my classes are all canceled. My income is up in the air. So if you have the spare income, if you're getting paid to work from home, why not consider supporting some of your favorite artists? You could commission them. You could send them a tip via Ko-fi. You could send them a monthly pledge from Patreon. By helping to support them, they're going to continue to make the work that you enjoy and the work that you consume. This could be musical work. This could be video games like game devs. This could be art tutorials like the one you're watching right now. This could be artwork or even comics. All of these artists are currently in a precarious situation. And if you're in a position where you can help support a few, this would be a wonderful time for you to show your appreciation for the work they do via financial donations. Another way you can help is even if you don't have any money, you can tell other people about these artists that you really enjoy, especially artists who are going out of their way to create music, to create performances, to create resources that are helping other people stay calm and fill their time right now. So once the illustration had a chance to fully dry, I removed it from the chipboard, peeled off the tape, and here we go, a beautiful pansy edigame painting. I just ordered some glassine bags. I would love to send these out to a few people. Hopefully it'll brighten their day. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this easy and accessible and I hope to see you guys again in the near future. Bye guys!